Building and Zoning Committee. Uh, Commissioner Pransky, your chair of that committee. Thank uh, you, Mr. President. Take over. Uh, I'll call the uh, meeting to, this evening to order at uh, 8.42 p.m. And the first item on our agenda is appeal number 22-3708, RAL Group, that's the Dunkin' Donuts, uh, at 2-6 Township Line Road, uh, as has been amended. And I believe, Mr. Diazio, you are going to give us a quick heads up on this one. Or not. <laughs> You're muted. I needed to find the unmute button. What I'll do, uh, if it's okay, I'll let Henry start. Um, and then I will chime in, uh, if that's okay with Henry. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Um, thank you all. Uh, yeah, this application is basically a zoning hearing board application. Uh, they've been before the planning commission a couple of times. And as part of that, uh, process, uh, there was a request that they perform, um, a traffic study, uh, in as much as that's generally associated with a land development process. They, uh, they agreed to do that and did a traffic impact study. Um, as part of that study, there was also a response from, um, the township engineer McMahon, uh, who provided comments that uh, as part of the recommendation on Monday, um, it was agreed that the applicant would address those comments prior to uh, submitting or as part of the process for the land development approval. Again, their proposal is geared towards uh, creating a, an additional, a dual drive through lane and demolishing an, a, a structure that, on, an, on a property that they plan on acquiring. Um, to allow for uh, an expanded use of, of, of their services. Um, there were a number of com uh, issues that were raised by the residents uh, and community members specific to traffic flow. A lot of those comments were uh, incorporated in the uh, township engineers uh, review letter, uh, but uh, I would like to turn it over maybe to, uh, turn it back to Ed or David Shakowitz, who is uh, Shakowitz rep representing the applicant. I think at this point we could turn it over to uh, Mr. Shafkowitz, and then if the board has any questions, uh, I can assist with them at the end. I think Henry's summary was pretty comprehensive. Mr. Shafkowitz. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everyone. My name is David Shafkowitz. I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant. I know the board is uh, relatively familiar with the app, with this application. Uh, Scott Mill, or site design from our site design engineering firm, is here. I don't know if we need to put the plan on the screen as of yet, Mr. Chairman, but the long and short of it is, as Henry had mentioned, we've been through, um, I think our third planning commission meeting uh, a couple of days ago, and we were before you guys, I think a couple months ago. One of the major issues that came out of our zoning application, which is essentially a request to permit a drive-through on a piece of property that is going to be about 27, 28,000 square feet, where 30,000 square feet is required by uh, the zoning ordinance. There are a couple other items that are a little um, less significant in terms of uh, us providing for for in excess of the amount of parking that's necessary. The ordinances permit 120%. We're just over that, you know, where there was like nine parking spaces required for our development, and we're proposing 15. Um, and then there were some other items that were mentioned that are that are variances that are asked for that um, may be pre-existing non-conforming conditions that the applicant is improving, not making worse. Um, but in the alternative, we've asked for variances related to parking in the, in the front yards and some buffer requirements. So nevertheless, um, after meeting with this board, we were asked to put together the traffic study. Al Federico, our traffic engineer, put the study together. Um, did Mr. Federico, I believe, is stuck in another meeting with Ms. Pianzio, as it turns out, in a different township, but um, that report was submitted and uh, reviewed by McMahon, and we were advised uh, relatively adamantly that a response would be necessary and to take all the matters extremely seriously, which this applicant will and will and has. Um, a preliminary uh, written response has been already prepared. Um, we suspect if the board is inclined, we could submit it as we proceed towards the zoning hearing board or as Henry had mentioned, most of these items will largely be addressed during the land development phase of the project. 
Um, this project will be also a land development, which requires us to both come back to this board and the planning commission to address these issues. The good news, and I think uh, Anton might be here tonight, but I think the good news with the McMahon review is that generally the counts that were done, the new trips that are proposed that will occur as a result of this site uh, and, and the change from being uh, entrance only, let's call it a no drive through to a drive through wasn't going, those figures weren't at issue. Um, the way I would generally summarize those uh, items was there's a, in this intersection, there's about 2000 cars during that go through the intersection during the peak timeframes of rush hour in the morning. And I believe something similar in the afternoons. The proposed development, according to the studies, ITE um, manuals and the like, that we are going to add about 20 new cars to that peak. So of the 2,000 cars that go through the intersection, the change of no drive-through to drive-through will be about a 1% increase. Um, when we do these traffic studies, as the board I'm sure is well aware, what we look for is whether or not this increase in traffic will require any mitigation um, or new development or improvements to the intersection to help alleviate any concerns. And at these levels, of increases, um, my traffic expert <laughs> tells me that there's no mitigation required, but nevertheless, there may be issues that need to be addressed on site with turning movements. Um, some questions about if we're going to add curb and sidewalk, how that would be addressed and how those um, ingress and e egress would be addressed, how access to the site will be addressed. And all those this applicant is committed to, to working out with the board and the board staff um, and the professionals as we go through the process. So for purposes of another um, item that Henry had mentioned is some of the public comments, opposition that we have with regard to the site. Um, another area that my client took, takes very seriously, um, they did meet with um, the neighbor today. Um, luckily, we caught one of them and had a relatively um, decent conversation about what they would like to see happen and how we they believe what work can be done on our site to help mitigate their concerns. Um, I know there's another neighbor nearby. I don't know if we had um, were able to have a similar conversation, but um, I'm sure those will come up during the process. Nevertheless, um, my client has been committed and, and part of the revisions that you'll see in this plan is that we've been able to create a better buffer that doesn't exist today. Um, we're pulling the loading areas and the trash removal areas away from the property boundaries. More hey, Dave, towards the center of the site. Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if I could uh, gain access to share, I can put the plan up so we can all look at it while Dave's describing it. Would that be okay, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, um, if, if we feel that's necessary to explain this, sure. Yeah, it might give a little more. Um, Scott, start do the current plan and then. If the board needs more information, we can then switch over um, and show the, the original design and compare it to the new so, design. Yeah, up on the screen is the black and white plan. This represents our, our latest plan, incorporating uh, some of the revisions that, that Dave was just getting to now, where he talked about relocating the loading and trash, which we had had up in this corner here. Uh, we moved them to the internal area, um, surrounded then by the uh, drive-through uh, lanes there. Uh, which allows for some more green space and buffering um, possibilities up in this corner, which would help buffer the existing dwelling here. Thanks, Scott. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, realistically, that's going to be the major change in terms of the last version of the plan that, that we saw. The drive through that's being proposed is a 13-car stack. They do have the ability to um, have the drive through stack around the building through the use of this bypass lane, people enter in through East Township Line Road, they can circle the site and enter through the drive-through, um, allowing for a larger stack and hopefully preventing, you know, any um, overflow into the public roadways. Um, we also providing enough room for when people do leave the site, depending which movement they want, um, they can go out to Church Road or circulate around and go out to Township Line Road. One of the items we talked about in the planning commission, which I know is going to be more of a planning issue, a PennDOT issue, um, is just figuring out what movements are going to be the safest. Um, I think this this applicant and with the 
being on an, on an inner on the corner that we have the ability that if need be we can restrict certain movements as a, if all the professionals agree and PennDOT agrees to um, make the site safer for movement um, for ingress and egress because we have the light at the corner. So if we say in the future it made sense to restrict left turns out onto Church Road, we can encourage people to circulate the site and make the right turn out on East on Township Line Road, and then they can go with whatever direction they want on Church Road. So this site gives us that flexibility, and I think those were some of the things that McMahon is going to ask us to look at as we go through the process. Um, having said that, like I said, we have um, talked to the to the neighbor. Um, to this, which is really to the south of us, whose house is on the corner, the property next door. Um, there is an existing stockade fence on the site already. We talked about replacing that to something more amenable, more pleasing. They were also very nice, very considerate of the idea of potentially allowing us to plant on their side of the fence, as well as on our side of the fence to create more sound deadening. We talked a little about the type of fence that could be used where most of these, um, white vinyl type privacy fences that we see are actually hollow inside where there are there is a version of this fence which allows for sound deadening to be put in between the panels and the fence. So there are options for us to continue to improve that situation for them along with you know moving the parking that's proposed on that side of the property further away from the, the fence line. And we were also considering the idea of restricting that to, to um, employee only. So there isn't constant movement in and out of that that area. Um, having said that, um, I wanted to reiterate my clients. Um, we had a long conversation about this um, at the Planning Commission. Um, my client is committed to doing what is necessary, um, going hopefully going up what the board will consider above and beyond um, to make the site safe, to make the site work, to continue to work with the township professionals through the site, through the process um, to make sure um, there's no detriment to the community at large. Um, one thing I do just wanted to kind of maybe focus on just a little bit, but I know it's hard to kind of focus on just the drive through as it relates to the zoning relief being requested because it all kind of ties into the ultimate land development plan. But if you're looking at the site and seeing whether a drive through on the site works for a 30, 000, for, for a site that's just under 30,000 square feet in the 27, 28,000 square foot, is that we do have a site that, that configures well in terms of allowing for up to 13 cars to stack in the existing drive-through lanes. We have ability to put seven cars, give or take, behind the menu board, which is also um, something that's in the realm of doing these things is, uh, is um, deemed favorable. The other thing is, is Duncan is also going to do a whole interior renovation of the site, which is gonna change how the interior of the taking the orders operates. So, It'll give us the ability to get through um, orders. I think the average is, is in about like 150 seconds, something along those lines. So I think I probably talked too much, Mr. Chairman. I know you guys had a long night. I appreciate you listening. Um, uh, we appreciate the opportunity to continue to work with staff and uh, everybody and hopefully push, uh, working this project through. So we're happy to listen to any comments and questions. Okay. I, I, I saw a match address. Going to get that. There's going to be several questions, and I'm going to be amongst them. But we'll start with Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Thank you. Um, and if we can take this down, the, the plan down at least for the purpose of the discussion. Um, I, in fact, was active an active participant in uh, Monday's uh, Planning Commission meeting. One of the things that I stressed and got concurrence on from the Planning Commission is. Uh, their purview is not limited just to the zoning hearing board issues. It also covers the land development issues. And in fact, um, I appreciate that um, that there have been, uh, Mr. Shafkowitz mentioned, some of the discussions with the neighbors and, and uh, some of the changes on site to try and, and um, manage uh, the additional traffic, et cetera, well, on site. But where I have uh, significant concerns I raised with Mr. Federico, and in fact, I compliment uh, what I read from uh, our traffic study from, from Mr. Cooner uh, and McMahon. Uh, there were extensive questions and concerns that uh, were expressed with respect to the traffic. I had, I had questioned Mr. Federico, who did, you know, um, 
automated traffic counts, but was not physically present on site to look at just how much challenge there is, both on the access and egress from that location, from, from that retail business, from those that are across the street, uh, county corner, and also uh, you know in, in the area, um, and the amount of congestion that already exists in that area. And I believe that Mr. Cooner um, did an extensive analysis and raised many significant issues that frankly aren't going to be covered uh, in, as far as the purview of zoning hearing board. I, I believe Henry, we had a, uh, a, a conditional um, uh, take no action with concerns about the traffic uh, analysis by Mr. Cooner and where, where things were uh, represented but not clearly addressed. So I will simply, as the ward commissioner, but more importantly, as somebody who's very familiar with that intersection of, of um, Church Road and Township Line, the amount of challenge that already exists, anything that exacerbates, adds to that congestion issue is a problem. I believe Mr. Cooner um, has had some subsequent discussions, at least Mr. Federico represented it. And I would ask Mr. Cooner to basically be uh, you know, firm and diligent because in the issues that he raised on Mr. Federico's traffic study, there was more than ample reason for those things to, to potentially have an impact on what is ultimately approved during land development. I don't wanna spend the time uh, that I just uh, spent on 222 Church. I'll simply say that from a zoning uh, hearing board standpoint, most of the issues that were raised probably are addressable. As we get into land development, and in particular, the traffic issues, I'm going to uh, ask the board to pay very close attention to that three and a half pages of detailed questions and concerns that Mr. Cooner from McMahon presented that cause us to at least have a reason to, if not take exception, then ask for some uh, serious concessions or changes in what's being proposed when this moves to land development. Since this is focused on the zoning hearing board portion, it's less critical now, but I'm asking the board to pay close attention to what's been submitted. And to Mr. Cooner, I think you've done a terrific job in your uh, evaluation of what was submitted by Mr. Federico. And I hope that you'll work closely with us to help us bring both the, the solutions and whatever we need in order to, from both the state and the county to help us manage what are going to be exacerbated uh, traffic and congestion challenges on that location. So I appreciate it. I thank you, Mr. Shafkowitz and, and, your, and the team that working for the developer and working particularly on the zoning hearing board issues that are specifically in their purview. And I assume you'll be in front of us uh, in the not too distant future to discuss in detail um, how you're going to address many of the traffic issues in particular that both the, the residents, but more importantly, the community will want to raise in order to allow that to, to happen in the way that it's currently proposed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, brief as usual. <laughs> um, you can inhale now, Mitch. Um, question, uh, Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, but it goes to just a little bit of the credibility of the traffic report. Uh, Mr. Federico's study ends the last paragraph or so of the January uh, letter uh, ends with his conclusion about Bristol Pike. Uh, Typo, yeah. Well, I hope that's all it is because, uh, you know, I, <laughs> So do I. It's just a street over. It's just a street. It's close, but it's not. You know, no. We understand, Mrs. Rapport. We'll, it, we'll be, be be sure of that. I know. Um, we were we did our best. To maybe move a little too not quickly in terms of doing the study part of it, but maybe writing the report. Well, it, it made yeah. me a bit nervous about what uh, data apply to our situation uh, when I came to that conclusion. So. It, uh, again, it's it seems like boiler. Typos right? are one thing, yes. and and uh, credibility of the numbers is something else. Thank you. No, I will. We'll be we'll be careful of that. And I know I'm hoping um, Anton and Al know each other pretty well. That 
they'll be able to uh, realize that those the counts were right, the locations right, the videos were taken. Hopefully, just a typo, but we understand that. I appreciate it. Sorry, Dave. Mr. Chair. Oh, certainly, Commissioner Back. Yeah, um, I just as my ward basically abuts that particular location. I, I have to strongly back my commissioner Zygmuntfeld on his statement. Um, I won't repeat it because we'll be here till one o'clock in the morning. And you probably you couldn't possibly remember. And it. I could not. Nobody does it good as well. me. <laughs> but I just want to say that I, I definitely um, side with my fellow commissioner Zygmuntfeld. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brockington. Thank you, Commissioner Brockington. <laughs> All right. Uh, um, besides the fact that. Um, Apparently, most of the issues are really saldo and not zoning, which is what we're taking up this evening. Um, I did have a, a couple of questions. You said, I think, uh, with the new design, you can stack, what, 13? Yes. Okay. What is your current stack capability? It's no drive-through right now. So. Ah, okay. Um, so you're basically looking at taking 13 off the street, hopefully. Um, also, I noticed you have increased parking spaces, so you have high hopes for this location because you have more drive-through and more parking simultaneously? I, if you, if I may, Mr. Chair, I'm not, Ms. Scott, can you answer that question? I'm not sure about what the existing parking is compared to what's being proposed. I thought we were bringing it down, um, but I'm not, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head. Yeah, well, I'm doing the count right now. It was, it was said, you mentioned the number nine at one point as opposed to, I think- five. Oh, I, I apologize that for no, nine is what's required by the ordinance for the size of our building. We're proposing there's, 15, but I thought there was at least that much, if not yeah, more. There's, there's at least, including the, the business next door, there's at least 25 to 27 spaces currently on site. Okay, it's above and beyond what, what's required. Um, so that, in, in effect, is not a zoning issue, but my concern, and this question is going to be land development, how you shift things around. Uh, you still have a nasty choke point. You have two lanes coming in, but at one point they become a single lane. So no matter what you do, it's going to slow down to one lane traffic, one lane going through. And no matter how many you stack, if there's more than you stack, and I don't know what your um, rush hour business comes to as far as the amount of cars that are going to go in and out, mm -hmm. they could still be tailing off into the street. Well. There's a couple of things that also, it's a, it's a really interesting point because there's some things that like, again, from a land development standpoint, we were considering that we could use to make sure it doesn't tail off into the street with using delineators. So people have to circulate the site to get into the drive-through. They're not jumping the drive-through too, and then get stuck out, stuck out in the street. But, and we'll, and we'll, we'll um, address this further because I think it'll give some confidence is that when you have about 2,000 cars a day or during the, the peak go through this intersection, we can calculate how many trips we expect to come to the site in general. And then 75% of those, give or take, use the drive-through. And with the timing that we have to service each client or each customer, that we think that a six or eight cars, you know, is what the ultimate conclusion is. You know, it's beyond me, am I? But that that usually is the amount of stack we need in the, in the drive-through lane. Um, and I think the way they do it operationally too is that they try to encourage one side really for people who had already pre-ordered so they come to the right if you pre-ordered they come to the the window and say hey i pre-ordered my number is my name is and then they'll say yep we're ready where the other per where the other side is for people just coming in and doing their orders um but it also allows them to time them that you know with the because i the way they take the orders finish one go to another finish one go to another just allows more people in the in the lanes rather than necessarily calling both at the same time <laughs> and then you know hopefully not crashing into each other as they merge into the new lane so they, they've it's really it's a fa fascinating science mr chair that you know i'm learning a lot about but it's uh these guys haven't figured out how to how to run it through and i'll, I'll we'll make sure we have more detail when we come back to see you on how all that'll work I'm sure that's confident. Well, considering that most of this is going to be really resolved in saldo, um, I will ask Mr. The Commissioner Sigmund Felt, uh, if you have a recommendation, I would be thinking no action as far as the zoning side. No action on the zoning side, absolutely. But I would I would agree that the uh, since the Planning Commission did reference a, a concern, uh, you know, or caveat on the traffic, that we should that should carry from the board. 
but uh, no action with respect to the zoning. All right, I'd like to point out for everybody before we take the vote that this is a carryover uh, from Mr. Zygmuntfeld from previous meetings and anything that falls on his agenda and somehow we managed on item one to take up a half an hour, but thank you, Commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take responsibility for part of that. <laughs> all, in, all in favor of no action, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Uh, we'll go to 1B now. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Okay. Thank you. Uh, appeal number 23-3716, Gerald Schatz for 1110 West Church Road. Mr. Sekawango, give us the yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you uh, again. Um, just giving an update to the board that uh, uh, after we put this on the agenda, uh, we received a letter, um, a request for continuance. So this will not be hard tonight. It won't be before the zoning hearing board either on um, uh, next uh, next week. So uh, this this is a, a continuance. Thank you, Mr. Sekouan. Uh, just, just as an update, uh, as part of the continuance, the applicant actually is going to be expanding uh, on the application to incorporate uh, the former Wincourt Academy property as part of the zoning uh, zoning relief request. That use technically um, is um, was abandoned. So if they were to reactivate any use that's related to a, a school use, they would need to come back. Uh, would come to they would need to come before the zoning or go before the zoning hearing board. So just giving you a heads up on that. Thank you. So we're this is tabled. So we need to nothing on this one at the moment. Correct. Um, Okay, that will bring us to 1C, appeal number 23-3717, Yolanda McAllister for 1719 Ashburn Road. I am intimately familiar with this, but Mr. Sikawango, I'll let you tell us about the applicant who wasn't at the Planning Commission, about the items that she wants to try to have put through that have no business in that zone, but please tell us. Yeah, again, I don't believe the applicant is online. We, we reached out to her. Uh, she's She was aware of these meetings. Uh, hopefully, she will be at the zoning hearing board meeting. But uh, they're proposing to allow uh, to have or request to have a short-term transient lodging and vacation rental and an event facility and multimedia studio uh, at this location. It's a single-family dwelling. Uh, in the past, going back to 2016, they they did some work without approvals and uh, had to go through the earth disturbance, disturbance uh, uh, permit approval process to rectify those issues. Um, this use as part of the planning commission, there was indication from the residents that were there that the right. use may actually be an active use. Uh, so we will be actively monitoring that and issuing pertinent uh, violations as necessary. As one of the neighbors who lives relatively close to that facility, I will tell you that there are many problems uh, with that. And um, without without reiterating everything that went on the Planning Commission, which sort of summarized it, uh, I would vote that, um, I would recommend, I would move that um, if, if the applicant does proceed to the Zoning Hearing Board, that we are represented by council that this thing be torpedoed as quickly as it came up. Mr. Chairman, can I make one point? Is that possible? I, I'll try to keep it brief okay. and characteristically. <laughs> um, if, if the members of the board would just take a look at the original zoning application submission, it's almost like a ruse because what they're saying is they wanted it to be allocated for traveling nurse use and sense. for some type of, of um, lab, quote unquote, environment. But if that's not available, then I'd <laughs> like to have an open-ended opportunity to use this as a uh, bed and breakfast, as an Airbnb, et cetera. So as, I think- As a sound have, studio, as podcast, as right. uh, streaming location. It, yeah. was, it was the most disingenuous and offensive submission that I've seen, and that's, that takes some. So I think, you know, the Planning Commission rejected it, and I think we should do the same and make sure that that kind of abusive situation is clearly impermissible in Cheltenham, and in particular in a residential community where it's completely out of character. I'm done. Thank you, Commissioner Brands. Thank you, Mr. Zygmuntfeld. Um, any, any comments from commissioners? Uh, any comments from the public? All right, I would make that motion that if they do proceed to the zoning 
that we are represented by counsel vigorously. All in favor? Aye. 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 To Aye. oppose it. Yeah, the to oppose, right? To, be... to oppose. To oppose. To oppose it. To oppose, yes. You understand what I meant. Yeah, but it needed I can, to be I said. Used for everything that Mitch says. I... All right. That, that concludes item one on the agenda. All right. Item <laughs> two. Review of zoning hearing board decisions, see attached number 2A, appeal number 20-3710, Larry Ackley, grounds of restoration for 7631 Waters Road, that's St. Joseph's Church, that's the coffee people. Uh, this has been pretty much talked through. Um, is there anything we need to do on this, Henry, or we just review? No action. I didn't think so. No, um, to my word, I would say take no action. All right. Uh, we have a motion for no action. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 2B, appeal number 23-3712, Michael Hill, Camp Englewood for 900 Rock Lane. Again, uh, Mr. Taekwondo, if you want to tell us about their little problem and why we should take no action. Yeah, these two were all were before the zoning hearing board. The zoning hearing board voted to approve uh, the request uh, for the use to be in the flat plane. And there you go. Uh, uh, the recommendation probably would be no action for, for both this and Wall Park. I just, yes, I wanted people to realize it was just a floodplain issue. And I will uh, couple this with 2C, 23-3714, uh, Thomas Wachowski. Is my pronouncing that right? Okay. Uh, for Richard Wallhouse, for one Wall Park Drive. This is for a sign on a piece of township property yet because we're in a flood plain, we have to go through this process. And I would vote for, what, I guess no action on both of these. All in favor? Aye. 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 That closes out too. Number three, receipt of monthly citizens committee meeting, meeting minutes, see attached, uh, planning commission. I think there was one item, Henry, you wanted us just to bring forward informationally in front of the board, if I remember correctly. Yes, so as part of the, uh, the requirements of the Pennsylvania Municipal Planning Code, the Planning Commission is required to uh, present a report uh, of, of their accomplishments for the year. Uh, as part of that process, we were able to have an, in, uh, an extended discussion, which literally continued as part of the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. That discussion was related to a consideration of looking or relooking at the uh, zoning ordinance as it relates to personal care businesses. Uh, we have certain, um, we, we've seen an influx of those requests uh, going before the zoning hearing board as part of that uh, requirement or as part of that use, we have a 750 uh, foot distance requirement, separation requirement for all personal care businesses, irrespective of the fact of them being similar or dissimilar. Um, they have to go through that process. So the recommendation um, based on some of the reviews and some of the applications that have come through was to maybe consider an amendment to the ordinance that would allow for uh, that separation to exist for similar personal care businesses. So if it's a hair salon and it's another hair salon, you know, that distance should be maintained uh, versus a hair salon and maybe an aesthetic uh, type use or whatever it, it may be. So again, the recommendation was uh, to consider an amendment to allow for that separations to be specific to similar personal care businesses. Again, unfortunately, the township uh, business uses or business spaces we have lend themselves to those types of uses. At least that's what we're seeing in terms of square footage. Um, uh, but I, I, again, it's 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 a demand that's there. We may have reviewed a few as stated in the uh, summary. Uh, I'm sorry, there may have been a few that went to the zoning hearing board as part of the summary, but we still have, as part of the zoning determination, we still have a ton that come through that we deny and they end up moving to other communities. So okay. hopefully this will allow for, you know, maybe... Uh, filling up some of those vacant spaces and a little more a little more flexibility yeah um yeah. part of the discussion is going to have to be uh, definitions because uh we did have several that came in front of us where this one's that i'm just going to make this up 
was a nail salon and this was a nail salon, but this one did something completely different than what this one did. And so actually they weren't similar competing businesses, they just fell under the same title. Um, so I think defining things carefully uh, for the sake of the, uh, the ordinance is gonna be very important. And I would recommend or ask if the board would consider uh, giving Henry and his department a, the authority to start moving this forward as far as crafting it, because it will take them some time. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I agree 100%. I think it's a, a great idea from the Planning Commission, from Planning and Zoning, and, and I, um, I agree, Commissioner Pransky, um, the, the, the characterization of personal care as such a broad definition um, in, in many instances, these businesses are not actually in conflict with each other, but rather complement each other. Mm -hmm. and, and someone could visit mm -hmm. a particular location in one of our commercial areas and actually receive multiple different uh, personal care services from uh, several uh, retail establishments. So I, I think it's a great idea and I'm fully supportive. Uh, would we all be in support of giving them the authority to start moving ahead on the research and crafting this, getting it yep. together? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, do we yes. need to do anything uh, formal on that, uh, Mr. President, or can we just say, go get him, Henry, and pick it up when he comes back to us or something? You can do the latter. Nothing okay. needs to be done for me. You got the green light, Henry, okay? Thank you. And I'm sure that will mean Mr. Diazio has got a lot of work in front of him. <laughs> okay. Uh, that takes care of the planning commission. Uh, so I would move to receive their minutes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item 3B, Board of Historical and Architectural Review, February 16th, approval of a certificate of appropriateness for application W23-273 for 157 Greenwood Avenue, Wincote, for the construction of a five-foot high wooden fence, privacy fence with one-foot lattice at the top set back from the corner of the house conditioned on the submission of revised plan. Um, I'm familiar with this, but Henry, please give us the detail. Yeah, so this this was an application that was discussed at length. Uh, the applicant um, actually did, uh, actually is, is online, but they did uh, submit the revised plans uh, for, for building approval. Uh, so they've met, they've met that condition as part of the uh, a COA recommendation. So we staff recommends approval okay um if the applicant has something they want to say before i ask for questions from the commissioners and vote for an approval feel free if you feel confident that we're just going to go vote for the approval just sit there quietly and be happy go ahead oh that was a thumbs up like okay. yeah <laughs> are there any, any questions from the you said be quiet so yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a hint it's it's in my ward i'll just say uh I'll also move. Okay. All in favor of the approval, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Applicant, are you opposed? No, I didn't think so. Okay. No. <laughs> thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, um, if I may. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, if I may, as part of the uh, the uh, Board of Historic and Architecture Review uh, meeting, which was the first meeting of the joint uh, Baha, one of the issues they raised and we you know, we're just presenting it. We're not saying we're supporting it. Uh, one of the issues they raised was they felt that um, replacement in kind and repairs um, did not really needed to get a certificate of appropriateness and should not be reviewed at the staff level. Um, um, so that was something they wanted us to bring before you, uh, which would trigger basically an amendment to the Baha ordinance uh, to require uh, repairs and replacement in, replacement in kind to uh, uh, get a certificate of appropriateness, which means going before the committee. Uh, staff made a case that, you know, that's just going to delay uh, approval for residents in our community, probably create a hardship, and we were not in favor of that. But uh, again, it's, it's up to the board to make that decision regarding whether uh, 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 an amendment is required to the ordinance. You know, I, I would not look on that idea favorably because of the things you just mentioned. And it does sound like it's a, it's a bit of a conflict with the, the duties of the staff. Um, there's nothing in front of us formally now, but obviously if something comes up regarding that, um, 
you should actually Henry, you look like you're about to say something. Yeah, I was just going to say it was we decided to memorialize it as part of the the minutes. Um, ah, okay, so yes. it's just a question of including the acceptance of the minutes. Okay. Um, any other issues with? Let's see, where were we? Three B and receipt of the okay. Um, was that part of receipt of planning and zoning? Was it at that point? Okay, so then I'm going to move for receipt of the planning and zoning monthly report uh, for February. All in favor? Aye. 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 Report of the building inspector for February 2023. Have we inspected anything? Yeah. I don't see that. We've inspected a lot. Um, All right. Thank you very much. So we're good. Accept the report, please. Okay. okay. All in favor of receiving the report of the building inspector for February 23, say aye. 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 Okay. Any old business? Moving on to new business, number seven, review and consider recommending the Board of Commissioners authorize advertisement of the Board of Commissioners' intention to consider the possibly to and possibly adopt an ordinance appealing Chapter 226 Real Estate Registry, the Township Code in its in the entirety. See attached. This is it's a question. Repealing. Of, repealing. It, yeah. It says appealing, but I think appealing, they yeah, it, appealing. I, yeah. I, I, I was, Thank you. I, when I read it, it said that doesn't feel right. Right. Um, <laughs> the uh, this is this is redundant effort. Um, from what I can tell from my inquiries, this generates about four or five thousand dollars worth a year in revenue, and it costs us probably twice that much to accomplish it, uh, plus the storage and staff time. Um, I would be all in favor of repealing that. Are there any questions from the board, Commissioner Arnold? Um, I, I'm not sure I understand it. So maybe yeah, Henry or somebody can explain. Yeah, yeah, it is. I'll give you the 20 second synopsis and I'll hand it off. Mm -hmm. to Basically, the county maintains the registry. They're asking us to maintain duplicate. Um, and you can go into the details, but it's redundant. And where do we get our money from? I'm sorry to jump in. So so every any any homeowner that's purchasing a property basically has to go record that or has to have that property recorded at the record of deeds. However, the township has a, a, a code requirement as part of the as part of chapter 226 that they also uh, submit that to the to the township, and uh, we generate ten dollars per per deed uh, from those parcels. Again, we're talking about parcels kind of uh, properties turning over very frequently and generating a ton of paperwork uh we, we're trying to we're kind of out of room for storage when it comes to storage but then also in terms of staff time it's it's quite a burden when it came to covid this was one of the things we had to put on hold because it was just gonna it was just a, a fruitless effort the, the county records deeds uh property owners get copies of those deeds and it's just a duplication uh, of efforts that's unnecessary what, uh, if I may, Mr. Chairman, what was the original intent of, of doing that if the county was recording it, or, or do we not know? Yeah, this ordinance goes back, or this section of the chapter of the ordinance, or, a township court goes back to the 60s, um, uh, so I, I can't really. <laughs> that's that's you know, the root of a lot so of the you things go. we've been dealing with. <laughs> there you go. All right. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Henry, for your uh, explanation. All right, then I would uh, vote to I would make a motion to recommend the Board of Commissioners author authorize this advertisement uh, to repeal. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Three. All right, moving to 7B. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Kilkenny Law. I didn't know we were buying it. Uh, in the amount of $19,000 for 2023 Zoning Hearing Board Services. Uh, they're the people who currently represent us. Are there any questions about it? Then I would move to recommend this to the, the full board. All in favor? Aye. 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 7C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a blanket purchase order for Veritex Mid-Atlantic in the amount of $30,000 for 2023 public hearing services and transcripts. Those are our court reporters. Any questions about this? I would move to approve or to recommend, I'm sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, uh, citizens Forum, number eight. Any citizens left? Okay. 
Uh, that leaves number nine. Oh, yeah. We're adjourned. Have a good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night.